um, in a metal being knocked around or explosions yes, or yes. hits or creeping on yeah. the floor. All of that was done at the Holly Container Studio in, in, in Birmingham. Right. As well as uh, Fireball XL5. Uh, Richard's mom said Jerry would go up to their house and, and put a, a, a pin on his head and do Robbie the Robot. <laughs> and, and, and when, when I, I'm a huge fan of the work of Jerry Anderson and the people that are connected to these amazing shows. Yes. And the very first, um, the very first show, animation shows I worked on were for a company called Cosgrove Hall, who were the people behind Children of the Wheelies, Duckula, Danger House. Hello, little old man. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, and I was in their cafeteria on one of the first shows I worked on and there was a guy there taking forever to choose the topic for his jacket potato and he turned around and it was Jerry Anderson and I was just, you know, I turned into full on fanboy, I didn't say anything and I was invited over by a guy called Chris Bowden who was the director of a Jerry Anderson show called Lavender Castle Chris now works for McKinnon Saunders who now make the, model, the, the puppets for Firestorm and I ended up having just this wonderful lunch with Jerry uh, and it's one of those moments where you're just happy to be in the room. You know, this, this, is, this is more than just yeah. work, this is what you yes. genuinely know and love, you know. Totally, I mean, I, I, can, I can vouch for that. I mean, I, I, going back many years, I was, had the opportunity of staying at the hotel that Jerry was staying at and he, he was in his last years and I can remember him walking out and he was just waiting for the foyer and then he just stood there, and I, my mate looked at me and I said, it's Jerry. I went, yeah, I've got to speak to him. I've got to say hello to him. And I walked over, like you, trying to compose myself and said, thank you for creating my childhood. Yeah. Because without you, you would have not inspired me to do what I do today. And he just went, you're all right, kid. Yeah. You're all right, kid. And, and, then, he, and, that, and then he went, but that was that moment for me was yeah. magical. Yeah. Well, there's, uh, and there are, the work of Jerry, you know, Jerry Anderson and his work in Legacy, it's up there with um, you know, a number of people who I just think were the, the best in their field. Yeah. Uh, you know, performers like Robin Williams and Kenny Everett. Uh, in fact, there's another Cosgrove Hallley. Anyone that Does anyone know Ken, Kenny Everett? Yes. There was a great British TV comedy guy and radio genius called Kenny Everett. And his TV show that was on in the late 70s, early 80s, it had a character called Captain Krem. And basically, it was a it was a little sh bunch of short stories on the radio that he did, and it was an excuse for a load of bad jokes. So it was a thing he pre-recorded, and it was an excuse for a load of bad jokes. But on his TV show, Cosgrove Hall, the people that animated Danger Mouse and all these other TV greats, they did the animation for Captain Kremen. And um, but he had some incredible, just stupid lines. Like, suddenly, Carla got a ladder in her tights. It stretched from the bottom, right up to the bottom. You know, things like that. Really childish. Yeah, yeah. But, but, um, but it was in the best possible tones. It was. <laughs> but, 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 but people like that, people like Jim Henson were massively influential to me, the guy that created the Muppets. And another guy was George Lucas. Yep. You know, around the same time as me loving Thunderbirds, I was a you know, huge fan of Star Wars. Yep. So the, the, one of the first films I ever worked on, the first one was Chicky One. <laughs> and the second, um, I got asked at the blow, I got a phone call this one day saying, um, are you free to meet the casting director of a new Star Wars film on Tuesday? And I said, hang on, yes. <laughs> and I went down and I ended up getting the role of his character in Star Wars Episode 1 called um, Axe Mo. In the, in the Senate scene, has anyone seen Star Wars Episode One? Yeah. Mm. Excellent. If you take a, in the Senate scene, the parliamentary scene, you'll see a bunch of characters bouncing around on these platforms making speeches. And at one point, there's a very handsome guy who's got a goat's head with three eyes and very dry skin. And you'll hear him say, The Congress of Bathurst concur with the right to honourable delegate from the Trade Federation. A commission must be appointed now. Give me a kick. Or something like that. And, and, and that's me, you know, as, as well as other little bits and pieces. But I got to work with George Lucas, and, and to me, just being in the room was everything. Yeah. Yeah, and we, and that as well as working at Abbey Road Studios, it's this iconic studio. You know, it's where the Beatles recorded. It's where the music for Star Wars is recorded. It's where Harry Potter's music is recorded. Even records from Doctor Who stuff, The Lord of the Rings. Yeah, all, all of that. And, 
and so and then you have people from Skywalker Sound, you know, Lucasfilm Sound guys there. And to just be in that room with those people, even if I was just watching, you know, I, 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 again, I go back to, I came here today to hear these people talk, because I'm a fan. I happen to also do this for a living on quite a decent scale, but I came here as a fan. So if I could have just been in that room and watched them, I would have loved it. But to be part of that was incredibly exciting. And, the, and as I arrived at the studio, the, the, the person sort of managing the day said, if you'd like to just take a seat there, and we'll, we'll be with you in five minutes. So the room was clearly empty, and they said, just take, just make yourself comfortable in there. I walked to this door, and it was empty apart from one person, George Lucas. And, and it was just going, you yeah, George! And, and inside, inside you were going, hello, pleased to meet you, but inside your body's going, ah! Yeah, you know, yeah. 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 And the, the, uh, the, the first thing that he said to me was, would you like a potato chip? <laughs> I was thinking, I shouldn't do that. So, then, so I said, no thank you, George, because it would make me crunchy during the recording session. But internally I'm thinking, I just took down the crisp from George Lucas. I should take in the crisp and keep it in the box until they invent eBay. <laughs> but, but seriously, it, it was just, you know, my role in that universe is very small. I know how much you was in it. Yeah, but at the end, and again, just to work with them and part of that was magic. Yeah. I mean, I'm just obviously, like I said, we've been given this for two minutes ago. I mean, I just thought obviously the stupid and shaggy, which we've just been doing. And then obviously, when I was a kid, I, I was brought up with Danger Mouse. Yeah, which the, um, I was brought up on the original Danger Mouse as well. Yeah, with Terry, Terry Scott. Scott. Terry Scott, yeah. Terry Scott was uh, Danger Mouse. Uh, he was a big TV comedian at the time. And David Jason, who from Early Falls and Horses, and those really great shows, he was the voice of Danger Mouse. And so, as a kid, I grew up on. As a kid, I grew up on Danger Mouse, Star Wars, and Thunderbirds. And yeah. now, I mean, Danger Mouse, Star Wars, and Thunderbirds. <laughs> oh, it's Scooby Doo. Yeah. So, um, David Jason was originally Danger Mouse, and Terry Scott was Penfold, and uh, and they had a, a little uh, sidekick called Nero, Baron Greenback's evil caterpillar. Well, in the new Danger Mouse, I'm the voice of his evil caterpillar. So you'll hear him making all these bizarre sounds like Woo! And I'm the voice of that. As well as, we've done a, we did a Penfold audio book. Right. Where Penfold talks all about working with Danger Mouse. So that's on Penguin Books. We've done a live show on the voice of Penfold as well. And there's, across the series, um, I do a load of cameo voices. So. In series one, I'm the voice of just over, I think it's 31 characters in the, in the first series. Only 31. I couldn't do 32. <laughs> I wasn't versatile enough, <laughs> so I'm not going to try harder. But, but I was 31 characters, and so there'll be people that walk on, do a gag, and yeah. run off again. Yes. But I'll, I'll be the voice of a lot of that stuff as well. Yeah. I mean, when you did that, that character, it, the thing that clicked into my head from my childhood watching those kinds of shows, do you remember a series called Trapdoor? Yeah, yeah. Her, yep. feed me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'd like to see that come back. Yeah. Because at the day, Danger Mouse still relates to children nowadays, yep. as, as Thunderbird relates nowadays. One of the things that, that's so timeless about Thunderbird as well is the fact that it is its puppets. It, it's even though it, it could be done, you know, the, the new Thunderbirds, I think, um, it, it's really found its feet now, and I do be part of the new Thunderbirds. I play a character called Captain Rigby. Captain Rigby, if you've seen season three of Thunderbirds Are Go, you'll hear, you'll see a guy who's Mr. Super Cool. He has the greatest hair in show business. So this, I'm, I'm the voice of him, but when you look at the, you look at the combination of models and CGI for the characters, the models in, in the new series of Thunderbirds Are Go, um, the backgrounds and the ships, they're, they're models, whereas the the uh, the actual characters themselves, they're CGI. And, and the, the mix is incredible. But if, if all you want, if you just want to spend 60 seconds, just watch the opening credits of the new series of Thunderbirds, the reboot of Thunderbirds. And those opening titles are astonishing. The, the music is so cinematic by Ben Foster. And they've used the original guy's voice from um, that voice that you piece nightly that you hear going five, four, three, two, him. They've used the original recording of that, but sped up the timing of it. 
uh, and, and mix that in with these incredible orchestral hits. Have we found Jeff yet? No. What? No, no, no. Why? He's not around, is he? Where is he? Who you knows? Can, 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 can you give letters? I would not know. He's no. not around anymore, right? You say that, it shows... What are you suggesting? Do you know something we don't know? Mr. Winky? <laughs> Maybe. No, really now. <laughs> but something else that was terrific with these voices. A lot of uh, Thunderbirds I'll go, the acting style in the new series of Thunderbirds. It, it's very real world like. It's, uh, there'll be some cartoons which are really larger than life. Woohoo! It's all, you know, which will be very high for reality. Um, whereas Thunderbirds, the, the new series and the original series, it was always steeped to this reality, which again it has helped, I think, make it stand the test of time. And one voice that's been constant throughout every season of Thunderbirds is Parker. And David Graham, the original voice of Parker, again, it was a huge inspiration to me, but it, it's been such a, a, a privilege to be in the room working with him, because David Graham is still performing Parker now, and he's in his 90s. And he is such a gentleman, but he's so modest about the whole thing. To me, he's, he's voice acting royalty. Yes. But his he his demeanour is that of just a, a very um, a very unassuming, just regular actor. So when you obviously I was talking to Shane and how they did the original Thunderbirds, which literally they just got a boom from the from the ceiling. They had their lines, and then they jostled to get to the mic with bruises and punching at each other and yeah. all this kind of stuff. I presume everything's changed now. You're going to you're going to booth to do your lines. Do you actually do your lines next to anybody else? Yeah, well, we're, there's a brilliant voice director called Dave Peacock, and we record uh, in Soho, in uh, Soho Square Studios, and it's it's kind of as good as it gets for, for that kind of work. So Disney, Pixar, they use it. We use it for all of the shows that we work on. And wherever possible, we'll get as many of the voice actors together in the, in the same room to get a bounce of each other. Because if you're good at what you do, you can you can make it come to life by yourself. You know, you, there'll be somebody probably reading your line, reading the other characters' lines in, and then you respond accordingly. But it's always better if you've got the actual performers with you, uh, and uh, it has this other life to it. There's also a great vibe in the room. So Sandra Dickinson plays Grandma. Got David Menken, his brilliant um, voice actor, David Graham, uh, and you know, I, I do my little pieces. And um, it, it's, it's a very exciting way to, to work. And every now and then we'll get a guy called Rob Hoagie, who writes um, episodes uh, live on, on uh, a Skype video call from Los Angeles, and you know, he'll be there and we'll see him on screen. And it's, you know, Fantastic. it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, do you, this is just a, I don't know how this works, but. Do they actually video you doing the lines? To no. Some, uh, because what no. I was going to say was, so sometimes, like with Pixar, they actually video the actors doing the lines and then look at how their face changes yeah. and then use those things to give it to the animators and to alter faces accordingly to make them blend in more with their actions. Yeah, th th this is, it's a slightly heightened reality. And so, they, you know, the, the animation team that they, that they are working with know very clearly how these characters need to live and breathe and move. And so it's, it's for us to breathe as much life as we can into the character voice performance and then it goes on to the animators who then make that happen. They, they don't do motion capture for us or, or even uh, film us, they don't need to. Right. They're just that good! <laughs> <laughs> so, like I say, you worked on, uh, you worked on the, the new Thunderbirds or Go. How does that compare, I know it's a different kind of thing, but how does that compare to say you were doing, working on Scooby-Doo, doing the voice of that? <coughs> It's very different. Well, the, um, my, my involvement in Scooby has been projects that are over here. So it, it'll be commercials and toys and games. So it's very much solo work that I'll be working on. Or more so with the commercial side of Scooby, I'll be in a uh, voice studio and then I'll be you know, half a dozen people in the studio just, um, making sure that's exactly how they want it. I mean, the, the comparison for, for every, different, every different project is different. Yes. So there is, it really depends on how they want to run it. So there's a great show called Go Jetters, which is an, um, an awesome kids show on CBBS. Have you seen Go Jetters? That, that was our reaction. 
there is a, okay, then he'll know this. If you're older than six years old, and a couple of you might be, I'm looking at you, sir. The, um, then you might not know this character, but there's a great show called Go It's on CBBS. It's a massive hit around the world. It's even got its own magazine called the Go magazine. Uh, and I'm the voice of a character called Grandmaster Glitch. <laughs> I'll get you no jitters. <laughs> no and for voices. that, we're all in the room at the same time. So every single voice actor is there together. Same with a, a, a show with Peter Kay called Roy the Racing Car. Every I love Peter Kay. I love him too. You know, we worked together for a, a, you know, a good number of years. And, um, and, you know, and all of us were in the room at the same time, all creating these character voices. And then you get the other side, where I work on a lot of games. In fact, there's a, there's a new game that I'm working on, kind of called, uh, that, 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 that's out right now, called Two Point Hospital. Years ago, there was a uh, game called Theme Hospital. It was Theme Park. And yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, Theme yeah. was a huge thing. Well, this game has just gone to number one around the world. Uh, and I'm in this hot, basically, it's a hospital simulator. So, so uh, it's for people that have unusual diseases. So like, you know, if you got your finger stuck up your nose, you know, it, 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 would, it would be, you know, you'd go for help. One of the diseases you can get is grout. You know, there's all kinds of bizarre, you know, there, there are people who think they're Freddie Mercury that run, that run around the hospital. Basically, it's a very silly <laughs> hospital simulator, and in the hospital, I'm the voice of the awful hospital radio station. Uh, and uh, I, I made DJs in this hospital radio station. But for that, we did a live link to the studio, or the their offices, from my studio to them, and we just go through every single one of these comedy lines and, and we work it out together and, and perform yeah. it that way. That sounds great. That really does. I mean, firstly, thank you for coming. Because well, really, I mean, you came here to see the stuff, you ended up being on the stage. Like you did. Who else wants to go? <laughs> <laughs> and like I say, the, the amount of voice work you've done, which is so different from one medium to the next, is amazing. Uh, and, and the thing is great too, if there's, if there's anyone here trying to figure out what they want to do for a living, it really is up to you. You, you can make these things happen. If you, know, you, if, you, if you know your craft, if you know your subject, and you're committed enough to getting good at it, whether it's music, or art, or making models, or performance, or whatever, there's usually a way. But I, I, really, uh, I really adore this, and I'm... I'm uh, well, thank you for them asking me up on stage, and I'm just going to enjoy having a look around, saying hello to Shane River. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for the man of Scooby-Doo. Let's hope this Scooby-Doo. I thought he was still really good. <laughs> <laughs> Marvellous. Marvellous. Mark Sill. And this guy, ladies and gentlemen. Richard Ash. You know I'm the other new Patrick Brown, it's Richard Ash, everybody. Thank you. Good stuff.